our hair um, can be the key to examining this thing we call race mm. and this these ideas such as like identity yeah, and belonging. Actually. We can only control what we can control. We it's can't true. control how other people react or how other people no. perceive us. All we can control is like how we bring things up and how we talk about how things. How we deliver. Yeah, exactly. My hope with the film is that enough people in the industry see it so that it so that it's not the burden on the actor to have to like bring up this huge topic that actually it's a topic yeah. that everyone knows is a thing. On today's episode of Texture Talks, I will be speaking with British actress Bola Evans Akinbola. We're gonna be talking about her new documentary, Untold Stories, Hair on Set, and having a little deep dive into her own natural hair care journey. This episode is brought to you by Fulham Scalp and Hair Clinic an incredible black, female, mother and daughter-led trichology facility based here in London, who specialize in Afro and curly hair and have dedicated their lives to helping us finally find the solutions to our biggest hair care problems. I've had a consultation with them myself <laughs> and I honestly have learned so much about my hair from that one session. It doesn't matter what condition your hair is in, sis. <laughs> Just take a moment and go and invest in yourself. Go to their website at Fulham Scalp Hair Clinic .com and get an appointment booked in today. Get your hair care back on track. Use my discount code TEXTRATALKS5 to get 5% off your consultation fee. And don't forget, like, share and subscribe. Help us get as many eyes and ears on this show as possible so we can help more of our community on their hair care journeys. I hope you enjoy the episode. <laughs> Hello, Fola, how are you? I'm so good, thank you so much for having me. I mean, let's be honest, I'm elated. Are you? <laughs> yes, I'm very happy with myself. Oh, good, good, I'm elated to be here. <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> so, I want to know, oh, there's so much I want to know. Because I know from your documentary, Untold Stories, Hair on Set, when I went to see that, I thought to myself, okay, I'm gonna have so many more questions than I planned initially. <laughs> when I reached out, I was like, oh God. And one of them actually stemmed back, it took me back to when you were watching TV films as a child. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was intrigued. What kind of hair did you see? What was normal for you when you looked at black, mixed race, woman of colour on the screen? Oh, definitely not, not curls out. Uh, I'd say it was mostly straight. Yeah. But also even thinking about that time, really, like the only person that comes to mind is like Halle Berry and Tandy Newton. I mean, yeah. Uh, and I... D and I think they both, a lot of the time, had their, their it was hair the pixie, straight. Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It exactly. was the pixie. Halle Berry. Both of them, by the way, fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> but also, but it, it was yeah, the straight the, pixie. Yeah, it was the straight pixie. <laughs> uh, or like Tandy Newton had her hair kind of like here. So that's very interesting that you asked that. Yeah, I definitely don't feel like I saw yeah. um, our hair out in its like full glory compared to how it is now. You know, you can definitely see a change. Oh, there's a big now switch. Now it's much, much more out. But then I'm thinking, do you think that that had an impact in any way when you then thought, might like to be an actress, might like to do this. Did your hair ever come into your mind as a potential blocker or was it just no. about the talent? You no, know, I don't think it did come into my mind at all. But also for me, like, if I'm honest, yeah. I didn't think that I was going to be an actor. Like I was oh, going to go to university. Let's bring it <laughs> yeah, I was going to go to university to do, my course was religion, philosophy and ethics. Uh, it, like if you said to people that I went to secondary school with, yeah. oh, Fola's now an actress, they'd be like, Huh? Are you like, sure? Like, I didn't do any performing arts in secondary school. Really? I did it when I was, like, little. Yeah. But not in secondary school. Interesting. Um, so getting into acting, I really kind of just, like, was sort of putting one foot in front of the other. I did some classes, then I did identity drama school, then I did national youth theatre, and then so, and then I was like, oh, actually, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah I'll do I this. this. <laughs> and then it became my career. So I did... I, it, that might have come into play if I'd been yeah. like, I want to be an actor. How do you do that? It was what more of an of organic. Yeah, it was quite organic. I was very, I was very lucky. I so. mean, and talented girl. Don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, come on, don't do that. Do that. <laughs> so if we look at the opportunities that you've had 
and the experiences that you've had coming up through the ranks, okay? Is there any particular moment that you remember that was hair related that really sticks out for you? That made you feel uncomfortable? You don't have to name names, you can yes. if you want. No, 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 I won't name names. <laughs> I was like, if you want to like do. Like a sort of experience. Yeah, an experience that stands work. out where you were like, this is, this is odd. <laughs> You know what? It's actually, it, it, it's not, I, I know, I know what it is. You have it. Yeah, I have it. <laughs> but it's not that it's like very extreme. It's not that something really bad happened. Okay. It was like the simplicity of it that, yeah. that bugged me. And then my emotional reaction afterwards. I'm so intrigued. I okay. was on a job. And when you start a job, what happens is yeah. um, the hair team will ask, what, what products do you like? Kind mm. of anything specific that we need to get in. And I sort of said maybe a certain like leave-in conditioners sure. or a couple of curly products my assumption was that obviously like conditioner and shampoo obviously you would get curly yeah curl curl relevant conditioner yeah. and shampoo i just didn't even think to check to check <laughs> that to me it's that's the equivalent of the catering saying do you have any dietary requirements and someone yeah. saying i'm vegan yeah. they don't then need to like explain that like <laughs> Therefore, chicken, beef, egg. Like, to me, As that's such. how I was thinking about it. Yeah. So I get onto set and they don't, they don't have uh, shampoo and conditioner that okay. is for Your my hair. hair type. Like, the ones that they were going to try and use were full of, like, sulfates and, and this and like, that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, so there's nothing for, like, curls specifically. And yeah. They said, oh, but you didn't tell us to get that. And I was just a bit, you know, I understood that, okay, maybe my communication could have been okay, better. Okay, I'll take my part in this. Exactly. But, but it, it really bugged me. And why this <laughs> moment stands out for me is because I left the trailer. Mm -hmm. And then I went into my, my personal trailer and I was like, I think I need to say something. Like, I'm not happy. Yeah. But the, um, my, I was like shaking. Like, yeah. to, preparing myself to go back Amp and say, up. like... I'm a little bit disappointed of how this has been. Like, to me, this is really basic, like mm. that you should have thought to have yeah. these things. And I was like, and then talking to her, I was like, you know, when you, you're nervous and you're like trying to stop me. And, and I really noticed, wow, this is, what's going on here? Yeah. That, that obviously it's not as simple as, oh, this is just her, that there's something deeper and emotional going on here yeah. that I'm finding it hard to like advocate for myself about this. And like, I'm very aware like that that seems like the most tiny thing. Like I'm not saying that my no, hair was I falling out it, or though. they were damaging my hair. It was just this tiny thing of like, you, you, that they didn't have the right shampoo and conditioner. But I just, that stands out to me because I realized, I think that was the moment where I realized like, Hmm, this is this is deeper than just than what I see. It seemed, I think it yeah. feels like for me, you're less than in a way. You're not really considered. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Where it's not very important because what well, you didn't tell us, so it's not here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The la the sort of the lack of care. Yeah, the lack of care and and just then it's initiative like initiative as well initiative like, and I, then it makes yeah. you feel isolated yeah. because it's like this highlighting moment of oh you are different because this is everyone else is fine with these yeah but you need something else yeah and i think for me i hate feeling like a burden mm. it's a real issue for me in all facets of my life i hate it so i'll really need someone's pen for example and see them with the pen and be like oh, i'll just deal with i'm okay <laughs> really how, yeah. how do you work on like try Telling yourself that you're not a burden, like maybe you're. Just I basically your do needs what back. you did in the trailer. <laughs> like, <laughs> can I breathe, then? <laughs> please, please, I'm sorry, I don't have one. I just stress myself out. But the issue is, in certain situations, I think it's amplified when you're a person of colour because you're like, don't you dare be put in the box of the difficult black lady in the room. Yeah. That's the next layer to it for me, and. My fear is for somebody like myself, and this is a real worry, who might come across as direct, but really, I'm, I'm a sweetheart, I'm a melt. I'm, I'm, honestly, <laughs> I'm, I'm a melt. I'm a melt. I am no fear <laughs> to anyone. Um, in a situation like that, what are you supposed to say? What do you do? Even with this incredible documentary, which we will be digging into in a hot sec, but even with that, I feel like there'll be people that will watch it and maybe will think, oh, she's not talking about us, we're, we're great diversity. Mm. Or somebody that will watch and not care. 
Yeah. So in those situations, how would you advise me, fresh little youthling, up and comer, trying to trying to make it in this game, but I haven't got Foley clout. Nobody knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> no one I've not even got clout. <laughs> Well, that tells you how little I have. <laughs> so what in that situation would you advise me to be able to do? Because it's a real genuine worry for me walking in with my little afro and I'm thinking, if I say the wrong thing, you know, mm. I'm about to get blacklisted. Mm. Oh, it's really hard. Yeah, and, I, and I like, because I don't want to give like a flippant answer because even now, yeah. In the process of making the doc, I've been on sets and I still find it hard to say something. And it and uh, the hierarchy mm -hmm. of yeah. the set also yeah. does impact things. I'm much more vocal when I'm. Sorry, this is a bit technical. This is it's like silly. It doesn't matter these numbers yeah. on a call sheet, but it's just easy to describe the hierarchy yes. of the set. So you Please. have a call sheet and everyone's given a number on the call sheet. Yeah. Um, so we sort of talk about like if you're one to ten on a call sheet, mm -hmm. it's easier to or one to five on a call sheet, it's yeah. easier to advocate for yourself. I it's see. much easier. Um, so if I'm like a series regular on a show, yeah. say I'm number three on the show, yeah. I'm one of the female leads or yeah. one of the leads, it's much easier to advocate for yourself and right. to speak up. But if you're coming in, um, you're number 50, gonna say. you're coming in for two days of work, mm. you're nerve like it's incredibly challenging. <sighs> So I think I would encourage people to try to have a dialogue with the, the hair team. Yeah. Come at it from a, like, compassionate, <laughs> as calm as you can place. Yes. Like, we can only control what we can control. We it's can't true. control how other people react or how other people no. perceive us. All we can control is, like, how we bring things up and how we talk about how things. How we deliver. Yeah, exactly. My hope with the film is that enough people in the industry see it so that it so that it's not the burden on the actor to have to like bring up this huge topic that actually it's a topic yeah. that everyone knows is a thing it's like you want them to start discussing it on yeah. your end yeah Can and you maybe discuss it? <laughs> yeah like maybe the team in anticipation saying i know this might be um a sensitive area like how are you feeling about your hair you know how are you feeling about our skill like reassuring the actor ahead of time yeah i think would be good so i know i've not really answered no you have answered advice. my question because i think it's a case of saying that we don't have an answer necessarily right now yeah i think it's okay sometimes to just admit we're in the process we're working on it, yeah you know and yeah. at the moment just go in calm <laughs> yeah go in calm and respectful because then at the very least even if for whatever reason you're not able to get the style or service that you really want, then as people like you are working on it in the background, then hopefully it will mean that you haven't put yourself in a position where you won't be called for more jobs as we're fixing it. Yeah. It's like a dual effort. Even though I know like it's, it's so frustrating yeah. to have to be like, oh, I have to stay calm and I have to say, which is what Naomi Aki speaks about in the documentary, yeah. that sense of like, you have to stay professional and yeah, and it's an anger that only turns inwards. She's so right when she says that. So uh, it's okay. I think also, you know, if you are having to do it yourself, keep the receipts if you're going somewhere like and they can reimburse you. There's lots of like plasters. Yeah. Um, that can be done in the meantime while yeah. the like proper change happens. Yeah. And I hate that people will have to use plasters, but I also want to be realistic about the fact that it's not like overnight. No. Everyone's going to get the right hair. No, uh, not at all. Care. So, you know, there's, there's lots of little things that you can do that Remedy it for now. Remedy for and now. And we'll keep grafting. Make it a little bit better whilst, yeah, yeah. the industry sort of figures it Let's out. Let's talk about that graft. That documentary, listen to me, there was a lady that was sat next to me, yeah. and I think my blood ring was affecting her view. <laughs> She's like... she, You know when you lift up out the chair? Yeah. <laughs> Leave She's me like, alone. alone. <laughs> I was like, it's emotional. Um, and it was when you asked, oh, I always forget her name. Anne or Sh Anne Ogbomo? Yes. With the shave. Yes, shave Anne. Clothes. Yeah. Anne. Anne killed me. Yeah. Talking about um, the, the, little, the, 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 the little babies coming up. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. because it hurt my soul yeah. to think that all we want for them is that they can just do their job. Yeah. 
where it's like, why on earth are they not able to do that as it is? Like, why is that a future hope yeah. in 2023? So I just have to say, well done. It was so good. Thank you. Thank you for coming as well. Oh, supporting. listen to me. Nothing could stop me. There was like a two, a two or three other things and I was like, you are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not free. <laughs> what has been the biggest learning moment, biggest lesson for you doing a documentary on that scale about our hair? <laughs> Learning in terms of the topic of our hair or learning about the process of making You know what, I'd like both. I'd like both. One about making the doc and one about learning like in our hair, like that, that category. I'm intrigued just in case there's anything I can take away. Hmm, okay. I think the biggest learning about making the doc yeah. was um, that, you that very little can be done by yourself. Preach. I think that's because I, it was a topic that I wanted to do something about yeah. from, I think the initial kind of seed was 2019. Yeah. And I had created like this pitch deck and I was going around pitching it and I was sort of very much by myself. I was in LA kind of doing that. Mm -hmm. I got demoralized because of the nose. Then I came back to the UK and uh, I was like, okay, I'll just do it myself. And so good for you, it. by the way, because some people Thank would be you. like, no, I guess I won't do it. No. I mean, it took me a little bit of time. <laughs> Like, I had, a, I had a, you know, a good year and a half of being like, mmm. and then I was like, enough people were like, come on. Yes. And uh, I was like, okay, I'll just self-fund it, not wait for permission. But it wasn't until I reached out to Jordan Pitt and yeah. Lee Daly from One Umbrella, and then later down the line of the process, Andy Mundy Castle from Dot Cart, that things manifested in the way that you then saw yeah. at that screening. And it's like, it wouldn't have been possible without all of the us. Team. Yeah, without that team. And also the team of all the like contributors that were willing to well like those contributors. sit down and give their time yeah. and and like give their hearts and their like, thoughts to it. Authentically, they were in it. Like it wouldn't have been possible without them. No. And so it really taught me that like people are willing to help. People are willing to support and talk about things that matter to them. It just has to be something that matters yeah. and it has to be authentic. And I. I've been really moved by that through this whole process of like, of, of, um, yeah, the collective effort. You must have known this was going to happen. <laughs> what if I told you that hair care makes up 24% of the beauty and personal care industry's revenues? I don't know that you'd care. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But... I'd be intrigued to know, of that hair care, 24%, how many of those people include trichology services that are helped to really maintain the health of your scalp and hair? Are you still finding it hard to grow your hair past a certain length? Have you maybe experienced some hair loss and you don't know why? Or does your hair just continue to break off without explanation? Seriously. What is the price you would pay for peace of mind? Since 2011, Fulham Scalp and Hair Clinic have provided the Afro and curly head community with the kind of honest and direct support needed to give us a clear understanding of the state of our hair and scalp and the steps that we really need to follow to achieve progress. Go to www.fulhamscalphairclinic Dot com and use my discount code texture talks 5 to get the help and support you need and 5% off when you do <laughs> let's get your hair care journey back on track and if you're enjoying the episode hold on <laughs> take a second just hit the subscribe bam won't take you long at all your support means absolutely everything thank you so much guys okay I'll let you get back to the episode now enjoy <laughs> like community yeah, Big exactly, time. exactly. Such community. Because you could tell that they that. were like fully invested. Yeah. At every interview, I just feel like they were they were there, mind, yeah. body, spirit. Like, what do you want to ask? Yeah. What do you want to know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were, they were, which was just, just dreamy. Yeah. And so I think actually that then leads to what I learned oh. in terms of about our hair is that I think I maybe subconsciously knew it, but it's more knowing. So I brought it up. We brought it up. Yeah. Is that, our hair um, can be the key to examining this thing we call race mm. and this 
these ideas such as like identity yeah, and belonging actually. and that like something so like that I think some people might think, think it's is trivial yeah trivial yeah um is actually fascinating and means so much to people and everyone has their own experience and therefore everyone has their own experience of this construct of race yeah and everyone has their own True. relationship to their identity and how they feel you know being british mm -hmm. and black or british and brown or whatever however yeah. they identify that no interview was the same yeah you know i was not i never got bored <laughs> i was always excited to do the interview yeah, yeah. i was you know i'm sure you feel the same like everyone has i was literally sat here like yeah <laughs> like, like, it you know, with all the different people you interview yeah on this. it's like but I think it's difficult to communicate that. Yeah. Because at the moment, I'm working my little booty off to try and find a way that we can translate this onto TV. Yeah. And someone, who will not be named, said, <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we've, we've covered this already. We oh. Recently, we covered this recently. No, we did a show about hair recently. Okay. Um, and we're not going to be revisiting this sector anytime soon. Okay. I had to look. It was basically like some kind of styling show. It wasn't about Afro curly hair at all, and it was in 2020. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and I was like, so he heard hair, yeah. and shut down. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, what a frivolous show. How so? How did that make you feel? That made me feel furious. <laughs> it's <laughs> like it's more than just hair, but also you choose your battles wisely. Yeah. My thing is. You open up the dialogue in spaces that are ready to receive it. Mm, yeah. That's because amazing, after a it? while, you're going to stress yourself out trying to say, it's not just hair, yeah. to people screaming. Mm. And to be honest, in my journey, hair on set is only going to help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so. No, it will. Because it's clearly not just hair. <laughs> yeah. And don't be... And I think, yeah, don't be demoralised by that, no. Like, we... Even though... so. I approached Jordan and Lee in like 2021 mm. and we from the beginning knew we were just going to do it yeah. ourselves but then at one point in the process we did try to get it commissioned yeah um we because my money was dwindling and I thought okay. fair enough I was like let's see if maybe we can get yeah. get, get people on board and we got all knows all knows and you know which is which is fine in the sense of like people don't have to say yes they're within their right but there fine. was a range of reasons some just like it's not for us. Some, yeah. um, you know. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, it would need to be led by not a mixed race woman, and it That's would, it would you know, it would, yeah? okay. it would need to be um, someone with a tighter texture. So some interesting politi political interesting. feedback there. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, but it's sort of like we kept going and. And now it is, and, you know, and now Sky have have picked it up and, and bought it, which is just amazing. But that sense of like those nose, I think not everyone will be able to see what you can see, no. and you just have to like keep going. I like what you. What was that phrase you said? Like not everyone's. You have to have the conversations where it's ready to be received. You said something very I poetic. Have, I, then. I, I, I just speak sometimes. It's and very I, I black out. <laughs> it's so poetic. Um, you have to open the dialogue in spaces that are ready to receive it. Love it. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> it's true. And, and hopefully then it kind of builds and spreads yeah. and reaches a critical mass. And then people themselves realize, oh, this isn't just hair rather than us having to like, yeah, I remember Heather, it's not just hair. It's like, well, clearly this is more than just hair because look at this like critical mass of support that this I mean, show is getting or whatever. My next question to you actually stems from that. And it's about responses. Oh yeah. Because the people that respond to Texture Talks, it's a real range, mm. have a real random selection of middle-aged white men oh. that I've known from a past or middle-aged white women. Fabulous. And they were like, this is fascinating. Fabulous. Like, this is fascinating. Oh, I love it. I, had, I love it. That's good. I've never known this, didn't know this. And one of them said, look, I, I hope that I'm not coming across this. I can't remember the word she said, but I think maybe just a bit uncomfortable, which I, I don't know what that word means at this point. I don't get uncomfortable at all. I love that kind of conversation. I was like, bring it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was just like, but this is helping me to also navigate um, any people in my life that are of colour where maybe it's at work 
or maybe it's um, someone that, you know, a friend of mine I meet in, blah, 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 in terms of, because the episodes, I talk about everything from workplace. Yeah. I talk yeah. about certain terminologies that are unacceptable. Yeah. Um, and she was like, so thank you. Yeah, you cover so much. Cover so much because then somebody that's not in our community or culture can quietly in the privacy of their homes listen and learn without feeling yeah. berated. Yeah, yeah, that's so important. What have been the responses that you've gotten from that doc? Honestly, mostly it's just been super positive and lovely. It's not <laughs> um, I, I also am, maybe because of being an actor, yeah. I sort of, even with like TV shows or films or whatever, I, te I don't engage with like reviews or. Uh, things too much to like sort of protect myself Your mental health. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I've not necessarily um, Like been searching <laughs> for the feedback, but however this this project is so close to my heart and I really did it for Yeah, th that kind of curly and textured hair community that I have wanted to see what that feedback is. It wasn't for is. the accolade. No, 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 exactly. It was to serve the community. Yeah, and also I would uh, th uh, Compare different to acting projects like with this um, it's feedback that I'm interested in and kind of about. want to like <laughs> interact with. Yeah. But it has mostly been very positive. I actually, I was at um, um, Curl Talk the other day and yes. there was a girl in there and she was like, oh, I came in here because of the dark. And literally I was, we were all of us, all the, and the hairdressers were oh like, my, oh my God, <laughs> stop. <laughs> but really like that's, it just means the world, it's been lovely. Literally. Yeah, yeah. And I was canvassing with my phone, like, okay, that, okay, save. Never heard of Curl Talk. Yeah, with, like, yeah, Instagram yeah. save. Yeah. So there were so many incredible names that I'd not come across, not heard of, um, and initiatives that I think this can start a fire, a positive fire, yeah. but in different sectors, like training. That's the key thing, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's obviously funding from the top, but the, it's training. And I feel like documentaries like that might light something in stylists, MUAs, to be like, you know what, yeah, all right, let's hop on a course. And if we can do that and we can see that change, I think it's all worth it. It really, it really isn't going to happen overnight, but I know um, a few people, because I was sharing it like crazy. So I know- Thank you. No problem. Um, there were a few curly head stylists that were not of color that were asking me if I knew anybody that was like credited. I, I put them towards Angela. I was like, oh, nice. Angela Stewart. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's fantastic. And I thought to myself, you see, it's things are happening. Yeah. It's, it's happening. Yeah. But the unfortunate thing is, these actresses and actors coming up, then you're not going to necessarily see us like in the background, like mm, <laughs> trucking yeah. away. Right now, what would you like to happen now that you're on that sort of wind down period mm -hmm. after the dock? Do you have any more initiatives in that space or any more plans to help the community when it comes to the hair care sector? Oh yeah, good question. This month is actually my like down tools month in the sense of, of uh, I don't want to drop the baton, but I'm passing the baton this month and then I'll rejoin the team. I love I just, that I just, analogy. Right? Like, yeah. I, just, I just need to uh, like exhale a like bit. Someone grab, take it, I'll be back. Yeah, exactly. But I need a I minute. I just need a little like <laughs> yeah. pause for my sort of just mental health and energy. Well-being. Well-being, yes. exactly. And also I've always felt like our industry is full of the most intelligent and creative people who can figure out ways how to make it look like dragons exist and it's mermaids are underwater. And so I trust that the industry can put that smarts and ingenuity yeah. into figuring out the Amazing. solutions. Um, but having said that, I, I do want to work with uh, Equity, who's our actors union, to figure out a way to really push to make sure uh, we get something in the contracts, the film and TV agreement. Oh, really? Yeah. But Having said that, um, the, there's a group of agents called the Diverse Squad okay. that are, have already been doing work on yeah. this. And that's what's so amazing is so many people have been doing work to push things forward yeah. for a long time now. And so I think for me, my contribution was this documentary because I think sometimes mm -hmm. you have to um, shine a bit of a stronger light on yeah. something. People have been working behind the scenes really hard and doing an amazing, amazing job. Yeah. Um, but I think sometimes something public, something that has well-known faces in, mm -hmm. something that's visual compared to like reading an article. I think sometimes a visual medium also is quite impactful. Yeah. I think 
I hope it accelerates the work that these people have already sure. been doing. Theoretically. Um, yeah. So. Oh, you think so? Hopefully. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, I think sometimes people need to really see and hear what's yeah. happening from these. In a very vibrant way. Yeah, exactly. And I would say your interviews on that documentary were vibrant. Some of them yeah. were hilarious. Yeah, I love <laughs> Everyone brought their A game. They really did. Like, there were a number of times where this is the problem with the documentary that's actually well made, is that you'll be like, oh. And then the next time you're like, oh my god, that's actually really funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have you laughing. That's yeah, you, you pull yourself out of it immediately. Yeah. When it comes to your hair, right now, this second, do the public have any say? Do you get any pressure in any way from the public? About my hair? Yeah. There was someone, I can't remember, it was an interview I watched, and they said that every time they changed their hair, it was like a topic of conversation for people. And I thought, well, that would be a bloody nightmare because mm -hmm. I hate it when it's a topic. Imagine in an office. Yeah. That's irritating. Exactly. So then that was it. Somebody was talking about Naomi Campbell. That was it. They were talking about yeah. Naomi Campbell. Yeah. And the wigs and the weaves and the... And there was a valid point someone made and they were like, well, the industry has kind of put it on us that we need to have this, like, long, straight, flowy hair. Mm. And unfortunately for a lot of us, it doesn't grow from a scalp. Yeah. So wigs and weaves are the only way. Yes. So to be able to keep that up, we're probably going to have times where, like, it's not going to look 10-10 or maybe we end up getting <laughs> bloody traction alopecia as a result mm. because we're trying to keep it up to the, the standard that you've put in place. Yeah. So I always just feel really bad for people that are in entertainment, in film, TV, because... Sometimes, and as we saw in the doc, that standard is so hard to actually get to, that pressure that you're affecting your hair, you're affecting your mental health. So I just feel like looking at your hair, I don't know if there's been a bleach on there. I doubt <laughs> it. I don't think you've worn a wig. These are all assumptions. <laughs> but I feel like we're au naturel and we probably always have been. I am au naturel and always have been. Um, but, but I think also, I mean, I should also say like, I'm on the come up. I think I have no pressure from any of the public because no one gives a shit about. Oh, they, can I swear? Everyone can Sorry. swear. Shit. No one. There no you. one cares, really. <laughs> yeah. You know, Naomi Campbell is the supermodel, <laughs> so she's uh, at someone who has such a, a big star as her. Everyone's going to have an yeah. opinion. I think because I'm, you know, on the come up, I'm a relatively kind of unknown actor. It's like I don't think I'm going to be receiving that, or I'm just not paying attention to it. <laughs> You're just blocking you know? it out. Yeah, it's like I'm blocking it out. <laughs> and I, I think what's hard is, is, like you said, is that people know it's, it's madness that our hair is such, and the choices around our hair are such a political statement. statement. And I think I, rather than an external think, a thing, I think sometimes I maybe think it in yeah. terms of, oh, if I want to straighten my hair for, for an event, it does cross my mind. What does that mean? I have a, I have a fleeting... And I do it because yeah. I want to and I like changing up my hair, but Fine. I do have those fleeting thoughts of, like, mm, should I straighten my hair? Mm. What if someone was to see that? Would uh, If a little girl was to see that, would she yeah. think that then her natural curls aren't good? Uh, but I also think we, as women, melanin-rich women, should yeah. have the freedom to do what we want to do with our bodies and our hair as long as we know where those choices are coming from. That's I think, the thing. Right? I think where there's is a difference the, the between core? being like, I want to straighten my hair because I hate my curls versus I want to straighten my hair because I want to feel silky and sleek today. That's just my vibe today. Very different, yes. right? I don't know. How, what do you think? I completely agree. And that's one thing I've had to work on. I used to wear wigs and weaves all the time. And if somebody had said to me, wear your natural hair, I'd be like, I like my wigs. Yeah. But I was terrified because I didn't know how to look after my natural hair. Okay, so it was because you were like, okay, I don't know how to... So I was like, panic, panic, panic. So I was like, leave me alone. I just like this. Yeah. But then now I realise, I'm sat here with my little afro, I'm like, no, I didn't know what to do with it. So yeah. it's working out where the line is and in terms of representation, understanding, I guess, how important it is. Because even though it may not necessarily cross your mind, even though I know you may think you are an up-and-comer, see you all over the gaff. I see you all over the place. <laughs> My mum lost her mind. Lost her <laughs> mind. She, she asked me to ask about something in the twins. Something so in the twins. It would have been death, 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 and, death paradise. and paradise. It would have been related to that. Um, and I, I, I was so disconnected. Hi, hi Paige's mum, by She'll love that, thank you. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> so I literally think that without even realising it, your representation is very healthy. 
it's very wholesome. Thank you. And I think, you know what, I think it is okay to, to think about these things. And yeah. I, if I do get to a point in my career where um, I am a bit more known or a bit more eyes on me, I, would, I will put my thought into that yeah. kind of thing because... Um, it does matter. It does matter. Whether it? <laughs> it should or shouldn't, it does. It does. Because what, your question that you first asked me yeah. about what I was looking at when I was 10 mm. on screen, you know, if I had been seeing a, a, a range of brown and black actresses wearing a range of skin, uh, sorry, not range of skin tones, wearing their hair in a yeah. range of ways, that would have had a subconscious yeah. impact. And so I am aware of that. I think kids coming up now actually do have have a wonderful kind of range of people to look yeah. at, which is lovely. Is there anything you want to end on? Oh, um, no, I think just thank you so much for giving me the space and time. Thank you for supporting the doc and all the it's work okay. you do with this podcast. I think we're both it's kind glorious. of like trucking away on a similar mission. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's trust and believe if we can support each other, because it's not a little one. Yeah. And I appreciate us for doing that for one another. Thank yeah. you, Fola. Thank you so much. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>